before dawn, they loading you up. You're on a bus full of guys that's dealing with the same fate as you. I felt my freedom being taken away. And, and I knew that was my fate. I had to draw from within. Either I had what it took to survive, or I didn't. And fortunately, I'm here today to tell you I survived. You see what you made out of, for real, because you're gonna be put to the test. But they played, they didn't play their age group, they played a women's league. You're not? Nope. Come on, go ahead. I don't like the buddy. You didn't even eat half. He's too ugly. He's too ugly. He's too ugly. Did you even take a bite? Eat half of it. Nico will eat well. Have some salad, because I'm not throwing it out. Did you even take a bite? Save this. Well, Sophia's got to eat some. If you could, Mr. Tedby, let's have a seat with my children. Does my need to be important here? Have the right to retain short counsel without delay? Have the right to telephone any lawyer? Do you understand that? Yes. Do you wish to call a lawyer? No. Have you called contact with a lawyer? Yes. Well, this building was the start of my nightmare and my family's nightmare as well. Ah, oh, man, it brings back memory. I spent two months working on this place, getting it ready for our construction company. So we ended up renting the building to these business people from Toronto, and they started to grow up in there. Had nothing to do with us, but uh, here we are. Start of a nightmare. Tomorrow we're going to court. If the verdict is guilty, then what's going to happen is the judge is going to sit there and he's going to say how much time your dad will get in jail. So if it is two years, if it's two years and your dad, we come home tomorrow and we say, Dad, the judge told your dad that he's getting um, two years in jail. Well, you won't know that tomorrow. We're going to get the verdict, innocent or guilty. Yeah, but from what I understand... They won't say. From what Paul says, it'll be maybe a month before... Uh, sentencing court happens. Why can we come? The courts aren't for you guys. You don't want to see your dad up there like that and the judge and all the lawyers and there might be media there. And you know what? Kids shouldn't be in a courtroom, especially Angelo. He's too young. We'll talk later. Bye. Bye. I'm hoping I come home and tell them, you know what? It's all done. Dad's innocent. We're good. Everything will be great. You know, you have nothing to worry about. But if I have to walk through that door and tell these kids that uh, it's not good, I don't think I could do it. There's no way. No. It's going to be hard. It's going to crush them. No. Oh. No, you're okay. I'm sorry. It's just going to, it's going to kill them. It's gonna kill him. Daddy, this is for you. Um, Dad, you are the most favorite man in the whole world. You bring joy to the world. I don't, I love when you play with me. I, I love you so much.
student at Wayne State University is facing criminal charges and has been expelled from school. But the question tonight, is he the perpetrator or is he a victim? DeMario McMurray called campus police after he says a group of young men started harassing him because he's gay. He filed a report with campus police. That led to the second incident involving three young women five days later. DeMario McMurray is charged with strangulation, which is a 10-year felony. Every time I go to court, I just get a feeling that I could one day go in and not come out. On account of strangulation, they say that it's assault with one intent less than murder, something like that. It's possible that I can have the maximum of 10 years in prison, which is devastating to anyone who has never been in trouble before. My mother and I both thought that I was on my way to bigger and better things. I was going to be the first openly gay African-American president of the United States of America. My life had just begun. Well, on case number 14-008-556-01FH, people of the state of Michigan versus Demario Alonzo McMurray. Appearances? May I please call your honor, Apollo Brown on behalf of you. And thank you. Good morning, your honor. Christopher Kessel on behalf of Mr. McMurray. Your honor, first with respect to the motion to suppress, Mr. McMurray through the 14th and 5th Amendment has a right uh, to not make incriminating statements, to not be questioned without his rights having been read to him. That is, of course, through Miranda and subsequent decisions. There was no, the, the, the response which uh, Mr. McMurray gave was not in response to any specific question that was posed to him, though. Is that true? I don't believe it is, Judge. The, the officer said, tell me what happened, and Mr. McMurray began talking. I know. The officer's questions, I think, in were in general and general enough to determine what had happened. There was a prior incident, and then this was another incident. And I think, based on uh, that inquiry, first of all, I don't think the defendant right. was in custody. Stop. The defendant in this particular case was the target um, of the uh, arresting police officer. Um, nothing should have been inquired of the defendant relative to the incident until such time as his Miranda warnings were to be given. As someone who goes into court every day, I sometimes forget how new and how scary things can be, especially for someone like DeMario, who, you know, I don't think he's ever been, I don't think he's gotten a speeding ticket before. You know, he's never been in trouble in his life. So to go into that courtroom, you know, you've got deputies with guns. Um, you've got a judge who, while I personally like and get along with, if, if I was a defendant, he would scare the hell out of me. And Judge, what I make a note of is in her testimony, she indicates that she was, she said she was choked, okay? But just because someone testifies to something, Judge, doesn't mean that automatically probable cause exists. So you may have a legitimate uh, defense here, right? Well, I certainly believe that, Judge. Well, okay, well, if you have a legitimate defense, then it can be tested by a jury. It's not, it's not gonna be tested by a jury. Oftentimes, I look at these uh, young men as if they were my children and uh, how would I be dealing with them as a father? If someone has committed a very uh, serious crime, even though they're young, I've got no problem with sending them to prison for a substantial period of time. Um, and hopefully, uh, during that period of time that they are in prison, that they do learn the difference between right and wrong. chose to sell the house. Other people wanted the equity of the house, which I get. It's tough, like you have a lot of emotions. You bought the house for a reason. You didn't just buy it 
you know, as a house and as an asset, you bought it because you thought it was a home. You thought you were going to raise your kids there. The day I got arrested, it was kind of unexpected. I felt like something was coming, but I didn't know something was coming. Um, I woke up to the sound of police officers banging on my front door. So I think the hardest thing about being arrested for me was calling my dad. I got a call from Courtney, and they were accusing her of misappropriation of funds and so you know my initial reaction is well obviously they're wrong i didn't know what happened i didn't know the magnitude i didn't know anything would happen until we went to court and in court they they uh, read out the the accusations and the what the crime was and stuff and holy cow unbelievable there's so many questions then. How does this ever happen? I have no answers. Financially, I was drowning. Something just had to give. And once you start, it's like a rush and an addiction. And um, I was just trying to claw my way back out just to see the light again and figure out what was going on and how to get back on track. And um, it just got out of control. No? Sure? Last chance. For someone like me who's never gone through anything like this, you have no idea what to expect. I mean, I feel like I've gone to hell and back already. I mean, I've lost my fiance over it. I've embarrassed my family, like, I feel so awful for them, and I feel even more awful for what's coming at them down the pipe. It's not even full-blown yet. Um, I've essentially kissed my career goodbye, which I worked my ass off to get. Um, I've lost my house, right? Um, we lost a baby in the process between stress and everything else. Where did we go wrong in this whole process? What didn't I do right? I have no idea. I hired a prison consultant to come in and talk to him about what to expect and what not to expect. Lee has a very different perspective on prison versus most people. I mean, he's been there for 21 plus years of his own life. Courtney's looking at five years at this point, uh, is what um, the Crown is looking for in her case. She's typical of a lot of my clients. She has absolutely no experience with the system in any way, shape, or form. Um, this is a first-time offense. Uh, she's 30 years of age, or darn near, and this is just so entirely out of her element. And I think she's terrified, certainly from a physical perspective, having no experience to draw from. She's never had a fight in her life. And I think she's fearful of going in there and maybe never being the same person again, losing her sanity in the process. All right, I know what I'm doing right here. Just really simple. Doo -doo. This is the first time I've broken into a prison. <laughs> Quite frankly. We are in. Coming up on two years since they closed this, I guess they still have no idea what's gonna happen. 
I'm intrigued. I, I've never walked it. <laughs> I've always been locked up in the back of a wagon. Now, all the cameras have been stripped from what I can see, but normally along this wall, you would just have a camera basically every five or six feet. I don't know how they were staggered, but there was considerable amount of security presence through cameras. When you enter this gate, the driver would have to be, wait for a green light to come on, uh, you see there, the wall, to be passed through. And the second gate would be closed, and you would sit in this area for a good, about 10 minutes, making sure that everything was uh, clear. Once you enter the buildings, the age of this place really hits you. It's, it's, it's like a museum. It's, it's really, really uh, an aged building. And, and frankly, from my feeling, it always felt like a dungeon. It was a very dark, ominous air. Uh, and you could feel the heavy air. It was a dungeon-like uh, setting. I think people would be hard-pressed to imagine just how brutal it is inside there. October 24th. 1982. I made a, what you would consider an impulsive decision. Decided to snatch a purse randomly. As I was attempting to leave, I encountered a, a security guard. I. Uh, Disarmed him. He had a gun. I had a knife. I disarmed him and continued to try to uh, elude him. Didn't want to hurt him. Obviously, he didn't want to hurt me. And uh, as I was attempting to leave, another security guard opened up, shot me in the back, paralyzed me. That was pretty much the, the extent of my criminal career. <laughs> Short, very short-lived. <laughs> right here, I landed right here. That's where I made my last steps, right here. Changed my whole life. I lost uh, a different future. One decision can cost you more than you're willing to pay. Tomorrow's the big case, the big verdict. We are all hoping and praying, a lot of prayers, that um, he's found not guilty. If he is found guilty, it's going to turn my entire life, my kid's life, upside down. You know what it is about this court system? I'm, I wish I was sure. I wish I could go in there and say, you know what, I'm positive that he's going to be found not guilty and everything's happy and we're good and we're safe and the kids will be fine. And it's, there's nothing like that. It's such unsurety and I hate it. I hate feeling like I have no control over anything that happens in that courtroom. Nothing. Over what the judge is thinking, you know, my kids. I have no control and I'm supposed to be the strong person for them when, I don't know. I, I can't do it. I, I'm falling apart in front of them. I'm good to a point, and then behind closed doors with Joe, myself, by ourselves, I'm not good. I need to be able to be really strong for them so that they're not scared. Hello? Yes, honey. Why you gotta go to the bank? 
Okay. No, you should be able to pull from the other account. Yeah, will you stop crying? Okay, but stop crying. We will get through this. Stop crying. Okay? All right, bye. Bye. The city of Detroit always had a history uh, of being a very violent city. We've always led the nation or been among the leaders and when it comes to violent crime. If you've never been incarcerated, I would imagine it's a very terrifying environment uh, because you're, you're coming into a situation where now everything that you do is regulated. Uh, you have no control over what you do at any given point in time. We're going to tell you what time to go to bed, what time to wake up, what time you're going to eat, what time you go to recreation. Uh, we tell you what you eat. You have no say-so in that decision whatsoever. And you come into an environment with a bunch of very dangerous people. You're coming into a situation that is not very pleasant at all. And it shouldn't be. DeMario, as most people, is obviously terrified at the thought of going to prison. You know, obviously, you spend five minutes with DeMario, and you understand why he might be more nervous than most. Um, if, if he's the subject of, of abuse and harassment on the streets, you can imagine, you know, because of his sexuality, you can imagine the kind of things that might happen to him if he's in prison. The story of my life, the autobiography by DeMario McMurray, My favorite things to do are talk because I love to hear my voice. I love to sing and write gospel music because it prepares me for my future. Plus, it keeps me out of trouble. My favorite TV show is Charmed. I like this show because of the witches and the magic they do. My favorite movie is The Gospel. I enjoy this movie because it's about prayer and the power of forgiveness. Um, DeMario also goes on to mention the th uh, goals that he was setting for himself at this time. And he wanted to be a lawyer, or if that didn't pan out, a gospel singer. DeMario started getting bullied, I think, when he was in the fifth grade. I am most proud of DeMario for standing up for himself. I really admire him for that. Beach Blake took a stroll down Dexter Avenue while I was walking. I seen this little girl I knew. I said, hey, no. The day of the incident on September 8th, I called my mother. She broke down. It was like a scene from a movie. They processed me and they booked me. I had to take a, a mug shot. I had to sit in a cell, like behind bars, for an entire week. It made me feel like I was human or I was just this otherworldly creature. Just, I could never, I couldn't stay there another day. I'd rather not be on Earth, period, than to sit one more day in jail 
with someone telling me when I have to go to bed or calling me out my name like I'm not an actual human. It's been tough today. Just moving has been brutal. Parole-wise, I have to be out tonight. You know you'll be looking back at this one day, um, and you'll be stronger for it. And I also know you feel at the root of this always that it's that, that you brought yourself here and that you wish you could go back and change things that you cannot. So I know it's hard now. You know, you're doing everything in your power to make the best of this and to handle it. And I know it doesn't feel like it, but it will pass. I know. I just have to get there. I'm just not... I just don't know how to get there. Like, I feel like I'm stuck on this island and I can see the boat, but I don't know how to get to the boat. Absolutely. Initially, there wasn't a lot of communication as to what actually happened. You know, she was very, held her cards very close to the vest and, and, and wasn't openly, openly communicative about what went on. And then when, once she hooked up with a, with a legal counsel, then the doors were shut. I'd ask her questions and say, Dad, I can't talk to you about that. It's, uh, it's all confidential. You know, I, I've got two daughters and, and they're both my best friends. And, and here's one of my best friends shutting the door on me. You haven't brought this up, but I know this also represents six years of, of you and Mark, basically, um, about closing, right, a chapter. Well, and I don't think the Mark and stuff's going to hit me right away. I think the Mark stuff will hit me later on, like next week or something else. Like, I'm so terrified about the peanut thing tomorrow. Like, I can't even... I'm not even on to Mark yet. Like, I just... You know, at least Mark's, like, pushed me away and he's kept distance and stuff, but with Peanut, like, even packing, I can't leave a room. She comes running after me, so... Well, now, she's gonna miss you, too. I'm scared if I let the walls down, though, I won't get through this. Yeah. We're on the home stretch after a long, drawn-out few years. The Crown Attorney is looking for a five-year sentence. For her, she's fearful of unknown, and that's, that's common. That, that's uniform throughout anybody who's facing it. But I think what's, what's caused this to be even more of an anxious period for Courtney is um, that begrudging acceptance that, that she has relinquished control and that no matter how much she puts into this and no matter how much effort and no matter how much remorse or no matter how much she does on her own behalf, it's out of her control. I know. Come here. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I love you too. Oh. It could be fit time, it could be two years. Now, even if they ask for more on you, three to five, that doesn't mean the judge okay. has to give you more than two years and can still give you house arrest. Don't worry, but whatever it is, it is. I know you're worried. I can see it in your face. It's okay. Mm -hmm. This case uh, has bothered me from the get-go. Because I told you it wasn't going to be. Easy. I, I know. But when you're friends with somebody, it just bothers me. When I, in this particular case, the way I'm, I'm starting to see the, I wasn't sure at the beginning. You know, I, I didn't know, know you from Adam, and I didn't. You know, it looks pretty bad. But as I got to know you, and I got to see more of the case, I believe every word you say, and I, it bothers me. And I don't. And I, you're innocent, and I should have been able to prove it. And I'm upset. And we didn't. Hey, we don't, don't say that Try. yet. Try. Don't say that yet. You never know. It's going to be great. Don't worry. People that find themselves before the criminal justice system for the first time, many of them have just made a stupid decision in their lives. The problem is that the repercussions of that decision are so significant that society has an active interest in prosecuting these people so as to, to deter others from getting involved in this activity. So when it comes to marijuana grow ops, 
it's very important that uh, a message be sent to those people who might be thinking about getting involved in this industry that if they do they risk being arrested they risk being prosecuted and they risk being sentenced after a conviction Judge saw a whole different story. He saw it the way it was no, presented he saw, he saw by the crown. Story. A whole different story. That he guy saw. saw the way it was presented by the crown, and because on the Joe Zambito maintains his innocence. I know he's put himself through a lot, and all these years is not easy. It's been almost five years that he's been carrying this on his shoulders, looking at his children, knowing in the back of his mind what might happen, and now it's going to happen. So. I suppose the quicker it happens, the better it is and get it over with now. You have to tell the probation officer that although I'm not guilty, I can understand why the judge is thinking no, I cannot what he does. Fuck that. I'm not lying. There's no reason for me to lie. Uh, yes, there is, because you need to be able to get house arrest. If you don't get house arrest, our lives are ruined. Do you understand what you have to do now? You have to play the game now. Yeah. Okay. It's no longer about telling the truth and defending yourself because that didn't work. You know, life throws you some curves. Life gonna give you all types of situations. In it. Either you're going to have what it takes to get through them, or you, you'll be taken out by it. There it is. That was one of the kind of buses I was on. That was a prison bus. I was on a bu bus exactly like that. Call a bluebird. It's just funny seeing it passing by, and I wasn't on it. <laughs> here we got it. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. We got nothing coming. What they thinking on that bus? <laughs> what in the world have I gotten myself into? <laughs> Some of them might be returning. Some of them might be going for the first time, you, you know. Some of them on a return trip. Some of them coming for the first time. A lot of things go through your mind, especially if you've never been before. But that, uh, being on that bus is a good introduction of what you got coming, because they shackle you down and put you right on there. I don't care whether you're blind, crippled, or crazy. I don't think no one can prepare to go to prison. That's not something you really prepare for. It's transparent. Talk about real time stops. No, I'm not scared. Every single day, I prepare for the worst. I could possibly lose every single thing. Now, I've already lost a lot. I lost the scholarships that I got. I lost tuition money. I lost everything. I, I lost basically my entire life. And with prison, I lose all possible freedom. And there's no coming back from that. On September 8th, 2014, did you have some contact with the DeMario McMurray? Yes, I did. Myself, along with other Wayne State officers, were called to one of the Wayne State dormitories. What was your purpose for going to uh, the dormitory? To investigate a, an assault and battery that just occurred. Okay. Another unit of mine that arrived at the same time I did, uh, they spoke with the victim while I went to the third floor to speak with the other half of the incident, Mr. Uh, McMurray. 
had you had any contact with Mr. McMurray prior to September the 8th? I guess at that, this point I'll object, Your Honor. I don't know how that's relevant to whether or not my client was advised of his Miranda rights when he was speaking to this Well, officer. I guess we don't know. We'll have to see as to whether or not there's some relevancy associated with it. The objection's overruled. Thank Please you, Judge. continue. And what was the contact that you had? Mr. McMurray had reported that he had been a victim of a hate crime. No further questions. Just so we're clear, before you began asking Mr. McMurray these questions, you never read him his Miranda rights. Is that correct? Correct. I did not read him his rights because he was not under arrest at that time. Was Mr. McMurray free to leave? No, he was not. Thank you. I have nothing else, Judge. All right. You may step down, officer. Here's a kid who found himself to be bullied, who found himself to be harassed, quite obviously because of his sexual orientation. And something happened, and the police got called. What surprises me is that they did no investigation whatsoever into what, you know, what illegal activity or what negative things they may have done. And normally, the prosecutor's office is, is a little bit better than that. I don't, I don't want sympathy. I don't want the empathy for what I've done. I've made a mistake. I'm owning it. What surprised me was how many people don't care. How many people who you've walked through fire and you've done everything possible for, and the people that should be there for you, the people that were supposed to be standing with me at my wedding, that even at the fact that I was arrested or I was being sued, turned their back on me and want nothing to do with me, um, it's devastating. You're a pariah on society, and it sucks. Hi, Jasmine, it's Courtney Hills calling, how are you? Hi, good. That's good, I'm just calling um, because as we discussed, I had to advise you of my address change since I've moved today. Okay, so you've moved as of today, then? Yep, so as of tonight, I'll be sleeping at my mom's house. Enough. All right, uh, I'll note that in the system, and then uh, your phone number is still going to be remaining the same, right? Yes. Okay, no other changes? Will you be contacting me, or will my new parole officer be contacting me then, going forward? Um, I, I will give you further instructions um, as to who you will be reporting to. Um, I need to... I'm so sorry. You ready? Just let me know when you're done then. <laughs> Judge, I think this case falls perfectly within the, the rubric of custodial and interrogation, and I would ask that any statements made by Mr. McMurray be suppressed as a result uh, of a violation of his Fifth Amendment rights. Thank you. Right. Mr. McMurray had been a victim just uh, a week or two prior because these people have some relationship together. So when the officer asked Mr. McMurray what happened, Mr. McMurray went on to say, well, the two girls came into my room, I tried to put them out of my room, and then at some point I blanked out and I had my hands around her neck and I was strangling her. Um. The court denies the motion to suppress the statement that was made by the defendant. Judge, you know, other than the officer, I mean, he, he's only going to say person of interest, but okay. if someone. Keep, keep talking. 
If, if I may, Judge, if, if there's a victim... I'm being facetious with you. I know, Judge. It's over! Thank you, sir. The so-called Tough on Crime initiatives have not worked. We still live in the most violent country in the world that is westernized. Now, I'm not suggesting for a moment that people who commit crimes should not be incarcerated, but I think that we are making an investment in the wrong place. The investment is going on the back end, building more prisons and uh, increasing incarceration, when I think it should go on the front end by trying to prevent people from becoming involved in crime. So I'm a strong proponent of crime prevention and investing your money up front to keep people out of trouble. Well, that was garbage. I love Judge Callahan, but sometimes he's just wrong. Um, if it weren't for the fact that I'm very confident still that we can work this out to the misdemeanor that gets wiped off your record, I'd be saying we should do what's called an interlocutory appeal, which means send us up to the Court of Appeals, because I don't think there's any question that, you know, you were the suspect, you know, the, the person of interest. I don't care what they call you. Obviously, they went to this place because they were alleging you had assaulted this girl. and. Then they went and asked you questions. And it doesn't, you know, it matters if the question is, did you have peanut butter and jelly for lunch today? Because that's not liable to get you to say, oh, I did all kinds of bad things. But when you say, what happened, that's liable to, you know, you tell them what happened. That's li you're liable to say things that you have a right not to have to say. And what we'll do is, is we'll sit tight until the first week of January is over. Um, and I'll, if we're going to be back here on the 16th, at 8.30, you'll hear from me a few days before then, okay? Okay. All right, tomorrow, have a good holiday, okay? Thank you. All right. Moving forward, so the, the list I have here from today and from what we've done in the past couple of days, support letters. We've got, what, a dozen confirmed? Is that accurate with mm -hmm. you as well? Haircut tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. And we know why we're doing this. Manageability, potential lockdowns, lack of shower time, grooming needs, plus eliminating any chance of somebody being able to use that uh, physically against you grabbing your hair. Okay, travel to the jail this afternoon. You know, I'm six foot three. Lee's told me going in, like, you're going to be a target. And it's not because you're white, it's not because you're female, it's none of that. It's you're six foot three, you're a presence in there, and nobody knows who you are. He goes, you've got no reputation, you're a first time offender, people are gonna test you. I'll set up two more contacts for you from former female inmates uh, with, with decades of experience over the course of the night. Prison can change people. People become emotionally devoid. They, they put a mask on to survive. You toughen up. You don't allow yourself to cry. You don't allow yourself to feel this. You don't smile. You do all these different things because this is what you need to do in your surroundings. Now, as time passes, unfortunately, what, what can and often does happen is this no longer is an act, and this becomes the person. And so the longer this goes on, the more of a risk you run of this person actually losing a big part of who they were. So how are you doing <laughs> <laughs> with everything that, we've, that we're doing at this point? Well, you know, awesome. <laughs> it sucks. There's no other word for it. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, as hard as it is, I think you've you've come to a point where you realize just, I mean, how much more insight you do have. And, and I think there's a... You're right, it does suck. This means a complete makeover to be somebody you're not. Um, but it's based on, on knowledge that you need to make this, to minimize the damage to you in the end. It's just tough. Like, I have to become someone that I'm not to survive when I'm in there and then change back to the person that I am, but not lose the person that I am when I'm in there. Yeah. I don't, like, it's a lot, I don't... But if we look at it from a tactical perspective, if I we know. use this, I mean, no differently than and we were talking about this, but um, preparing for a movie role, and I know it's not the same, but this is a role of a lifetime if you look at it like that, and it's one that's really important for you. You feel confident that you're going to be able to put on a poker face? <laughs> right now, no. All right, well, that's something we're going to really work on. It has been a really long four years. 
long and really painful. Parts of this have affected my kids in a horrible way. They say, uh, Mom, is, is the judge able to send him to jail immediately? And I said, yeah. He could say, you're hereby sentenced to two years in jail, and he's remanded into custody, and that's it. So I have to bring my three kids to a jailhouse to visit their dad. I'm never going to do that. Like, I, I can't. I don't want them to think this is as bad as it is. But you know what, I know the kids are suffering. Yeah, there is a possibility that he might go to prison. I think he'll be like six months or 15 months, something like that. But honestly, I don't think it'll be that big of a problem. I think we'll just get through it, you know? as a family. Next month will be uh, pretty scary for my family and uh, hopefully we'll get closer and, you know, have more family time and movie night and um, family dinner. That'd be cool. And it'll just be hard, you know? It's kind of hard seeing the guy that you love go to jail. I don't really care if he's innocent and guilty. I just want to get it over with. My biggest worry is if he goes to jail for a long time, like two years, five years, three years. I don't really miss him, but if it's like eight months, I don't really like, care about it. Because I just want to get this over with. It's been four years since it happened. I took pictures of my toys that I don't play with, and I just went on my iPod and posted them on Kijiji for money. When they get some money, I want to give some to my dad. Uh, he's having trouble with taxes, mortgages, bills, and all that. So it's kind of hard. I think he's going to jail, but he is, so what can you do? What do you what did you do today? When I went to the doctor, I popped up a hand. Mm -hmm. And me and my mommy gotta go with the I to go yet, but they gave me a pat on my left. Ready? Hold on. When a person is incarcerated, they can't be a father, they can't be a son, an uncle, a friend, a husband. There are all kinds of opportunities that they don't have to be involved in the social fabric of, of the community or the lives of the people uh, that care about them and that they care about. So it has a dramatic impact, especially on young children when you know that, you know, dad or mom are incarcerated. You can only see them uh, on, a, on an infrequent uh, visit, and the visit sometimes is pretty frightening and humiliating, especially to young children. That high incarceration rate is not good for a community. Ramona and Jesus. Yeah, I love that. Uh-huh. My son going to, to prison is not an option for me. I can't. Couldn't handle that. If my son is convicted, I think a big part of me will die. Because I did not raise him for this. I did. And I try not to think about it. 
And like I said, I just have to pray a lot and I just hope that he doesn't go and everything works out. So at this point, we're struggling a lot. My bank account right now is, my savings is negative $45, and my checking is zero dollars, like zero decimal zero zero. He hasn't had a check since the end of October, because November we were in court that whole time, he couldn't work. We have no money, there's nothing saved, there's nothing, we used it all. I sold um, the promise ring he gave me, and the prom promise ring I gave him when we were dating, which I actually have to go pick up the stone. It was a, an ameth, no, sapphire. It was a blue sapphire stone. So um, sold those two, sold the two necklaces, and I got like $700, which I paid Kojiko, and then I paid uh, the N1 bill, and then I had money in the, so I, I put $100 in Sophia's account, which I owed her. And, uh, you know, I had to do groceries, and that was it. That was the 700 So that gold is gone forever. And, um, I, you know, at least I, I feel like, okay, I paid some bills, but next month they're going to come around again. What am I going to do, sell more gold? I can't do that. So now I'm at the stage where I really need to sell my ring. So... So this year, today, I'd be a buyer at uh, $3,150. That's what I would give you for that. Wow. That's not enough. Almost half of yeah. what I paid for. It. Yeah. Okay. I can't give it for $3,000. Yeah. I can't do it. I know, I, I can't give it away like that. I'm not going to be able to replace it. Yeah. Yeah. No. OK. All right. So you have an idea. Well, thank okay. you very much yeah, for your time. Thanks. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate nice. that. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Excellent. Okay. Majority of my clients are certainly heading into a world that is dark, that is scary. killed in prison, dying in prison, rape. I think that's very scary for most people to, to sit there and try to visualize how they would make it through it.
We've joked a lot. Know. You know me today, and what am I? I'm after 25 years of shipping in those shitholes. I know. But if you do come here, it'd take months. Eight I'm months guessing. Of hell, though. Yeah, eight months of, you know what? Yeah, okay. Like, slow, <laughs> slow, slow time. Every day being the same. I don't know how much they use the outside here. It doesn't look like you would think this would be yard time right now. I don't know. So you'd be killing a winter here. not going to do well in there. Fourteen years is a long time. And it was uh, terrifying, to say the least. They put me in a segregation cell. N no accommodations for somebody like in my condition. And, and when I would have to take a shower, it was just a regular stall shower, big shower. No bench, no, nothing to sit on. And I actually had to crawl under the shower head and the officer would turn it on and I would have to crawl on the floor, get out my chair, and crawl into the shower to, to wash up. And that was one of the most difficult times of my life. I don't know how I survived that, but I did. I made it. In made up in my mind at that time that I would. I got up and showered. <sighs> Every day. Five in the morning, um, we got the phone call. My mom says your dad requests that you know, he wants all his boys there. So I got dressed real quick and then rushed over to the hospital. It's almost like he he sensed he was gonna die that day. And his last words to me was, oh, you're here? Okay. And that was the end of it. What are you gonna do? Good man. I miss him. He never.
never, uh, he never deviated. It was, uh, always believed in my innocence. Um, you know, and he, and he told me, if you're guilty, take what you, what's coming to you. And if you're innocent, don't ever stop fighting. You know, I'll never forget that. He'll always be with me. He was there when I bought my first car. He was there when my firstborn was, uh, Sophia was born. He was there when all my kids were born. You know, he's a great man. Hello? Hi. Jamara. Yes. Hey, it's Chris. How's it going, man? It's good. How are you? Good, good, all right. Well, coincidentally, when I was living in the office yesterday, I ran into Apollo, and she said she actually just got out of a meeting uh, with a complaining witness on your case. And, you know, she said, well, she's real upset because she feels like, you know, she's not someone who hates gay people or anything like that, like you guys are friends. But, you know, she also understands that maybe her version of events was a little exaggerated uh, to the police. So the moral of the story is after the conversation she had with her, Apollo is going to be authorized to offer you the misdemeanor, which is what we wanted in the first place. So it was, uh, it was a good day. <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, so it's a good day, okay? It's a great day. Very so well. I will see you uh, tomorrow at 8.30. Okay. And, you know, we'll go in front of the judge. We'll knock this out. And, you know, we'll, we'll get, I, I know how much you enjoy seeing Judge Callahan, but uh, we'll try to get you out of the Definitely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sounds good, Mario. I will see you tomorrow morning, okay? Okay, thank you. All right, have a good day. No problem. You too. What's wrong, Mario? You didn't want to have to plead guilty. I understand, I do. But you know I'm here for you. And it's just really tough right now for him. Because his whole life got changed upside down. And everyone else that was involved was able to go on with their lives. And it's just not fair. So this is probably something you've never dealt with before, and I shouldn't okay. be laughing, but I'm just, this is awkward. So I'm gonna take like five inches off my hair. Okay. At least. Okay. Um, so I'm potentially going to jail in okay. October, and I can't have long hair if I go in there. Okay. I'm assuming you don't get a lot of those requests. No, no, it's okay though. No judge. It. You don't want to touch it? No. Okay. You can just, yeah. There you go. My own little self torture. Oh my God. Why do you need short hair for prison? Uh, two reasons. One, I don't get a hair elastic in there. Okay. And two, it's a safety reason so someone doesn't grab my hair and bash my head off a table. That is, makes complete sense. So here's what's gonna happen, all right? The one count, all right, of, uh, I don't know what it says, aggravated assault, but it's misdemeanor assault, okay? Instead of the crazy 10-year maximum that was there was there before, okay? This is a ma maximum one year, okay? So it's a misdemeanor, all right? So what's gonna happen is, in a second, you and I are gonna sign this form, okay? And what's going to happen is, you know, you've seen people lay down the factual basis, okay? Because mm -hmm. you don't get to just go in and say, I'm guilty, and then turn around and leave. The judge, or maybe with a little help from myself and Apollo, are going to get a factual basis from you. So the judge is going to say, you know, sir, on this date and at this place, um, he's either going to say, did you have some contact with this young woman? You know, remember, everything is yes, your honor, okay? Yes, your honor. 
and did you put your hands on her? Yes, Your Honor, you know, without her permission. Yes, Your Honor, okay? Well, I put my hands on her without her permission, and she walked in my room without my permission, so. That's gonna have to be a separate issue. You know, we, you can't get into, you know, she bust into my room or anything like that. I mean, she never hit you or anything like that, right? Mm -hmm. okay. right. So there was an argument, and you put your hands on her without her permission, okay? It's, it's just gonna be like that, all right? And yes. The rest of this stuff, you just kind of got to bite your tongue, okay? Yes. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Now, you understand, Mr. McMurray, you're entitled to a jury trial relative to these allegations which have been brought against you, and that if the people waive trial by jury, you could actually have a bench trial by me. But by entry into this plea, there will not be a trial. There won't be a bench trial. There won't be a jury trial. The only thing that'll be left for me to do will be to sentence you. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Is this what you wish to do? Yes, sir. Do you understand further, Mr. McMurray, that by entry into this plea, you're giving up your presumption of innocence? From the time that you were charged with this crime, you were presumed to be innocent. By entry into this plea, that presumption of innocence is gone. The um, vast majority of people that go through the criminal justice system in the United States and are found guilty, they're guilty. Um, this is a great system that the uh, uh, British uh, set out in 1194 and which we have uh, bought into. And uh, it truly works. All right, the court will accept the uh, defendant's guilty plea to aggravated assault, a violation of MCL 750.81 alpha, a one-year high misdemeanor, and the court requests of counsel as to whether or not the court has complied with Michigan Court Number 6.302 in acceptance of the plea. I'm ready. Whenever you're ready, whatever you want, right here. Why do you stick around? <laughs> <laughs> Look at this mess we have, and you've been sticking around. But I love you. I love you too. See, so Judge Bondi, I want to start by saying that I respect your decision, and I have abided by the rules of my conditions for the last four years. Although you have found me guilty in this case, I continue to loudly state my innocence. Yeah, he'd prefer I wouldn't talk. I want you to speak to on what all. it says on that paper. I mean, like, word for word, don't veer off and do something else. You have to speak whatever it says on that paper you read. Understand? Because if you go off, that's it, we're done. We're done. You don't think we're done already? He, no, I don't. Be positive. If you're not, listen, if you're not positive, those three kids are going to fall apart. You need to They're going to fall apart Thursday when I don't come home. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Stop saying that. So now I'm going to jail. You're not going to jail. Stop thinking like that. Okay, what do we got? We got six days, no? Five? Six. Five and then in there, but six. Think you're going to be able to sleep Sunday night? Nope. No? I don't think I might sleep much before Monday. Well, I know this has been hard. I know everything that's come along with this, all the, all the prices that have had to be paid, but you're coming back, and this is yeah. not forever. No, nope. just getting through it. And you'll get through it. The first day is brutal. Um, mm -hmm. Not only the stress of court, 
but then being taken into custody. But it's brutal, and the first week is really, really hard. The first month is hard, um, but you'll make it through it, and time will pass. And then the next thing you know, you'll be on this determined quest to come back home, and, and that will give you power as well. Right. Um, okay. But yeah, the first couple of weeks are going Courtney to be will absolutely survive whatever comes down as a sentence. I firmly believe that this adversity, as difficult as it is for her right now, when she comes out, when this is over, when she returns to her life, that she will be better off and have a great deal of ins more insight and wisdom as a result of it. And everybody in your camp knows when you come out, you're not looking back, and that this was just an aberration in your life. You'll be okay. No idea. Okay, I'll talk to did you want to put in that letter? I put down that you're a church yeah, goer. Okay, That's so important. On. I put down... I don't think anything um, you say to him is going to matter right now. Well, Sophia, Carlo... They're sleeping, honey. Did you give Dad a kiss? All right. Oh, I love you, kid. I love you. What do you think? What's the verdict today? I don't know. No, no prediction. No. No. <coughs> so yeah, I'm going now. Okay. Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. Yeah. Love you too. I know. Go back to sleep. always follow me everywhere I go. Unless you're facing 10 years in prison, you won't really understand how I feel. The United States has the largest percentage of its people in prison than any place on the planet, yet we have more crime than any place else. That's a contradiction. It's not working. Jail should be for people that we're afraid of, not that we're mad at. I, I can only imagine what a nightmare this is for her and what she's, and how terrified she is about the whole thought process of, of having to go to prison and, and spend a day, much less a year or two years in prison. It, it's going to be a nightmare, but it's going to be hopefully a nightmare that she gets through. I'm not sure she'll be a better person for it, but she'll have done her time and, and we can move on and pick up the pieces and try and make the best of what we can do. My girls are everything to me. And uh, when these walls went up, 
When these walls went up, uh, a big part of me, I lost a big part of me. And so um, when I was approached about doing this and approached about being a part of this, uh, and my initial reaction was, no, I can't, you know, I'm not putting myself out there. And, but then in, in thinking about it, I, I, I had to put myself out there for Courtney. Sorry. Okay. I had to let her know I was in her corner. Today's the date and time scheduled for sentencing of Mr. McMurray. Have you had the opportunity of reviewing the pre-sentence investigation report? We do find it to be factually accurate with no additions, corrections, or deletions. Mr. McMurray, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Ms. Brown, do you wish to say anything further to me on behalf of the people before I impose sentencing of Mr. McMurray? The complainant is here, and she'd also like to address the court, Your Honor. Absolutely. Please have her step forward. How is this... Uh, uh, behavior of uh, Mr. McMurray impacted or affected you? Um, it's definitely impacted me a lot. What he did was intentional. It wasn't an accident. And I feel like, as like he even said, that he would do it again. I don't feel like it was something that was, it was planned. Okay. All right. And you believe that the resolution of this case as has been worked out by the prosecuting attorney meets with your approval? Yeah. All right. Judge, with respect to, <clears throat> excuse me, some of Ms. Anakwa's statements, I would just point out to the court um, that while Mr. McMurray does have no excuse for his actions, that these actions occurred because Ms. Anakwa arrived at my client's place of residence. Look, this no. is not the time to I understand, Judge. defend your client's uh, behavior. He's already admitted having committed a very serious uh, crime. I understand. And uh, so uh, castigating or denigrating or criticizing in any way, shape, or form at this particular juncture of a victim of a crime is, in my opinion, ludicrous. All right, Mr. McMurray, it is the uh, sentence of this court that you be placed on probation for a period of two years. You're to undergo a psychological evaluation and treatment. I want you to obtain uh, 40 hours of employment uh, per week or be a full-time student. You understand? Good luck. Thank you very much. All right. Okay, you're all set, right? Not really. You're good, don't worry. Am I? I don't know. Yeah. You'll be able to do this. 15th and 30th is the mortgage. Uh, home takes it out automatically. Correct. You know what I'm worried about, Joe, is the Collect insurance. Collect the rent from the when lady. I do, look at insurance. do I call them and re get a re Yes, you're going to have to redo it. i to do that today. Um, uh, second is. Uh, House on Wildwood. Why is something so stupid after ruining my life so bad? Well, from every negative, there's a positive. Nah, I don't see any positive yet. <laughs> there's I'm a not, couple. Where? Okay, so you made a really close friends. Okay, yeah, I, that, denying that, no, no. They, they're, okay, there's a positive. Yes. Um, I found out who my real friends are. You found out who your real friends are. Uh, your company. Still still exists yes. that's good so you found out and you found out a lot of people wrote letters for you so they they you know they really yeah. do think highly of you mm -hmm. uh what else let's say hang on i'm trying to think <laughs> not much else trust me okay maybe there's not a lot but joe well i still love you so that's a good one that's our time is it yeah
felt like I was just another African American kid who messed up and ended up in front of a judge for the first time. And I feel like that's all they will ever see me as until I do something to change that. I may not be the president now, but I can still make a difference in the same way that the president could make a difference. I might be on probation, but I didn't lose because I'm not broken. All I can say, man, is it's beautiful to be free. Just to be able to go places and do things that you took for granted at one time. I took freedom for granted at one time, and I'll never do that again. I'm just grateful to be alive, man. <laughs> Glad to be here.